Now in this second video, we're going to be looking particularly at actually graphing the equations. And so we're going to be comparing our graphs to the original parent function. In the last video, we talked about y equals x squared being the parent function, and that all the other quadratic graphs are somehow related to that. So we're going to be looking at that. Now, probably the way that you would already know how to graph these is by using a table. We've used tables on every other type of equation, so why not with a quadratic? So we're going to create a table. I'm going to start by graphing the, the y equals 2x squared here. And so I'm going to put in the same numbers I usually put in, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, now I have to be careful when I do the math here. I'm going to put negative 2 in for x. Now negative 2 squared, PEMDAS says I need to do the exponent first before the multiplication. So negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Okay, then we'll go on to the next one, 2 times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, times 2 will give me a 2. Okay, 2 times 0 squared, 0 squared is 0, times 2 will be 0. And then we're going back the other way now. 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. And then 2 times negative 2 squared, sorry, that'll be a positive 2. So 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. Now most of you will notice this pattern here, that it goes down and then back up. That will be the case for most of the equations in the current section, but it will not always be the case. So don't just automatically start going up once you pass zero. That won't always be how it works. Let's go ahead and plot these points now. When x was negative 2, y was 8. When x was negative 1, y was 2. When x was 0, y was 0. When x was 1, y was 2. And when x was 2, y was 8, just like that. So I've got my points. Now I'm going to create one smooth line. Okay, This should not be a zigzag line. It should not be straight lines between the points. But it should be one smooth line that curves and then goes back up, just like that. Now once I have that, then I will go ahead and I will look at the y equals x squared. And so I'm going to choose another color for this one. Let's go with blue. So let's do the y equals x squared now. I'm going to do the same thing, make a table, put in x and y. And I'm going to put the same numbers in as last time. So this one, eventually you'll get to where you're so comfortable doing y equals x squared that you won't even need the table for this one probably. But when I've got negative 2 squared, That'll be 4. When I have negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 0 squared, of course, is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. So I'll go ahead and put this one down now. At negative 2, y is 4. At negative 1, y was 1. 0, 1. And when x was 4, Sorry, when x was 2, y was 4. And so hopefully you'll see that I've got a slightly different graph this time. Okay, just like this. Now, when it asks me to compare, I'm going to look at it, and there's a couple of things I can look at. Number one, I can look at the vertex. Okay, vertex is in exactly the same place for both of them, right? Zero, zero is that vertex. It's the lowest point. Um, the other thing that looks like it changes is that the red graph is a little bit taller than the blue graph is. You could either say that it's been squished from side to side. It's been kind of pushed in like that. Or you can say that it's been stretched in an upward direction. Probably the stretched in the upward direction is more correct because if you'll notice every single x value from my parent function from the blue one has been doubled what used to be 1 is now 2 what used to be 4 is now 8 right same thing on this side 
the x value that used to be 1 for my parent function is now 2. Okay? And so that happens because of the 2 that is our leading coefficient. Okay? Any time that our leading coefficient is greater than 1, then that means that our graph is going to get stretched up. Okay? A couple of different things can happen. If the leading coefficient is less than 1, but bigger than 0, meaning that it's positive, if it's less than 1, then that means that the graph is going to be squished, or it's going to get stretched to the side. Okay, so I'm going to say this is a squish. Uh, I forgot the U in my squish. Or stretch sideways. Right? And then uh, the last thing is if the leading coefficient is negative or less than zero, that means that my graph will be flipped upside down. So if it used to be up like this, it will now be upside down and opening towards the downside. Okay, so that's our first example of graphing, and we'll do one more in just a minute.